Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Money Matters Top Tips for Success, where each and every day I bring on new business owners, entrepreneurs, and executives and have them share their top tips for success with you. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, moneymatterstoptips.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have Amos Schwarzfarb on the line. He's Managing Director over at Techstars Austin and also has a new book, Sell More Factor. I'm excited to get into that. But first, Amos, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you, Adam. I'm really excited to be on the show. Appreciate you having me. Man, so uh, I'm excited to get into Sell More Faster. I mean, I, I, first off, with a title like that, I can't see who wouldn't want to read that. I mean, a lot of <laughs> business owners, entrepreneurs, and executives listening. Um, but before we get into that and what you're doing over at Techstars Austin, let's get into your background a little bit. So how did you get started in your career? Oh, gosh. I, I sort of love and hate telling, telling the story, and I'll try to do the quick version of it. Uh, but I didn't really mean to get into to, uh, my career in, I, either in sales nor in, in investing. Um, but it really started because uh, of a chance meeting with the founder of a company called Hot Jobs at a bar back in 1999. Um, I was not in the Internet world. I was not in sales. Uh, we met one of the founders. We hit it off. And six weeks later, I found myself in my first uh, real sales job, um, cold calling for, for Hot Jobs. And, uh, you know, fast forward, you know, 20 years later, I've helped build uh, several sales organizations uh, for, for many different um, uh, internet companies. Man, I love that. And you'd be surprised. I mean, I've done, I don't know, at least 1,200 interviews plus, and you'd be surprised how many people had those those important pivots in their life in bars and in restaurants on chance meetings. They're like, I never thought I'd do this ever. So I guess we're not going to leave that as a moral to the story um, drink more. So we're not going to say that one, but I'm just saying that those <laughs> meetings those meetings you take are important, and you never know what's going to happen. Um, let's, yeah. uh, let's switch it up a bit, Amos. I do want to get spend some time on what you're doing uh, over at Techstar. So tell us a little bit more about the company, please. Sure. So Techstars is uh, it's the global network that helps entrepreneurs succeed. Um, more specifically, I run the accelerator in Austin. We have I think 51 now accelerators around the globe: Australia, wow. Asia, India, all over Europe, and all over the U.S. I run the one in Austin. What that means is that one time a year, I select 10 companies to come and join me in Austin for 90 days. And I work with them, um, you know, roll up the sleeves, work with them to figure out important things like who is their customer really, how are they going to really make money, uh, and what is their plan to do so um, at, at the most basic levels. Uh, and, it, you know, it's typically earlier stage companies. So they're real, real operating businesses. Most of them are generating some sort of revenue when they come in, although not all. And we're just trying to figure out how do we operationalize and get repeatability to, to help build the, the biggest, most meaningful companies that they possibly can. Man, that's exciting. And uh, that might have to be a whole nother episode uh, in the future, but I do want to spend some time on your book. So uh, let's just get right into it. So Sell More Faster. Um, what was the inspiration for this, other than having an awesome title? <laughs> Thanks. Uh, the title came last. Um, you know, I'll try to do the quick version of the inspiration. So Having grown up building sales organizations and then taking this role where I have, you know, 49, 50 other peers, I am one of the fewer people that have a sales background. Most of my peers have product or technical backgrounds. And so I, I, I sort of became one of the, the de facto people that when one of my peers' companies needed help with sales, they would point them to me. And plus, I'm now on my, um, uh, my, my the fifth program I'm running, and I, I mentored for three more. So 80 companies that actually mentored – and, I, and what I realized was I was getting the same sort of basic questions on fundamentals over and over and over and over again. Mm. And then so about a, a, a little less than a year ago, right about a year ago, um, I actually had a biking accident that put me on, on the couch for a couple of months. And I, and I don't sit still well, so I couldn't be outside biking. And so I decided I would um, put together a couple of blog posts that sort of would help my peers and, and their companies uh, get to some of the basics. 
And um, you know, I, I I wrote you know about 15 or 18 pages of blog posts that I you know I never published, but I planned to publish and circulated those around a little bit to get some feedback. And there was this resounding, hey, there might be a book in here somewhere. And so uh, I knew an, an editor at um, a publisher. I kind of floated the idea past her just to get a, a, a take of whether she thought there might be something there. She was super pumped about it. Um, and a couple of weeks later, I ended up with uh, with a contract to write a book. And, uh, you know, I think eight or nine months after that, it, it hit the stores, which was last September. Man, that is so exciting. And uh, you remind me of myself, you were suckered into it. Like you thought, yes. they, they, they said, oh, that, I mean, that's the, that's the real short answer. How would I do my first one? Why do I, I mean, I tell people that all the time. Like, how, why am I doing this podcast? I will suck it into it. Like they said, oh, yeah. you should try that. You said whatever. And then you're like, you're like, eh, and then you did. But the good thing is, is that you and I, know, we, you know, you knew when to say yes. So that's the awesome thing because many people I find just, uh, you know, it, it was outside of your wheelhouse. You hadn't done it before. You took the chance. You went and did it. You tested the market in terms of is this something interesting people would get benefit from. And now look at this awesome book you have. So I love it. Um, now, obviously, we're not going to have time to go into everything in the book. Um, but I did see a couple of things that I do want or one or two things that I do want you to comment on. So um, first off, I think this is one that a lot of people um, uh, struggle on, um, myself included. It's one of those things that you have to continue to kind of reassess and reevaluate what you're doing. And so that's chapter four in your book, uh, Getting to Repeatability. Um, tell us a little bit more about that, please. Yeah, I, you know, in, in, I, that's a topic I love to talk about because when I think about my, even my job, like my job is to help teach people ultimately how to find repeatability in their business and, and, and more importantly, how to learn how to find it. Um, and I do, I think it's the, it's the hardest thing. So in, in the book, I get very tactical specific to sales, which is start with one person, usually, uh, you know, in an early stage company, it's usually the CEO and certainly one of the founders that is out there actually talking to prospects. And they're not doing sales. They're doing customer development. If they do a good job, they can convert that conversation into a sale. And by good job, I don't just mean can they close someone. I mean, are they collecting the right data to suggest that the product that they're, they're selling is the right product to offer value to the person who needs that value? And so the way that I think about it in the book is, First, you have the one person. Can one person do it and collect enough data to say, I think there might be something here? Then can you, can you repeat that, which is, can I find a second person who is able to do the same thing without my daily guidance or without the, the, the CEO or founder's daily guidance? Can they do it too? And what are they learning? Because they're going to learn something new too. When, once I found that, tactically, I say, okay, now can you find, can you, a, prove that there's repeatability. You didn't just get lucky with one single person. Can you collect more data? And two, can you start to build a case that there's repeatability around hiring the right people? So you're doing sort of two things at once around repeatability. One is specific to the product. Another is specific to the operationalism, the, the operational of actually growing the team. And so the way that I think about it is you've got two people now. Can you get two more people? And what can you learn from that? And in my mind, once you have four people that are able to do this thing and you, you understand the patterns and you kind of know what all of the, the objections you're going to hit or the majority of them and how to overcome those objections, that's when you are at a point where you have found some semblance of repeatability and you can start to think about how you repeat that repeatability or start to scale is another way to say it. So I'm, I'm completely oversimplifying oversimpl at time, but that's, that's quickly how I think about it. No, and it, I, I don't, I mean, I don't think you're oversimplifying. I think you hit it right spot on. And I think about it, so when you think of, when you think about um, what this means, though, so um, the backside of your words is that if you can't do that, you don't have a business. And so I've been through that many times. Like if you can, if you're an owner, founder, and you can go out and sell or collect data, however we want to word it. But either way, if you're not if you're not placing a product or getting revenue, then you're not. Then you don't have a business number one. But um, you will if if an, if a founder cannot create a demo and or a system and or his, him and his team or her team if or a system or a pattern or something that can be repeated outside of that person, um, then you don't have a business because you can't scale. The owner will always be a bottleneck, and that's it. And and they could. If they're just selling based off of the off of their talent or charisma or their contacts or their connections, unless you're selling jets or something that's a really large, you know what I mean, thing where you don't need to sell that many per year. If you're selling anything that you have to do in any type of quantity, it's impossible to scale. You'll always be the bottleneck. 
That, I, I think that's right. And I think there's, you know, there's two more things that you made me think of. Um, one is which a mistake that I think a lot of organizations make, which is that they get one person who is able to do a, a good job and they automatically think that they should hire 10, right? They, so they move, they, they skip repeatability and they move to scale and things break because they just don't have enough information. And then the, the other thing that made me think of, which is that, uh, I, I don't, I, I think it's never too early to create what you believe your sales process would be, which is ultimately how you get to that repeatability. And I, I subscribe to over engineering in the early days what you believe your sales process will be so that you can truly understand all of the thought process and steps that you will have to ultimately go through in order to repeat sales at any sort of scale. And then over time, you can collapse that and, 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 and under, not under engineer, but engineer right size it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but I think a sales process is really important to think about from day one. Man, I love it. It's exciting. And really, I mean, and this is the toughest part for any founder because that's your baby, especially if you come from the product side, especially if you're a product um, person. Then if uh, the, the hard part is if you can't do these things, you don't have a business um, in terms of that you're going to be able to grow yourself, meaning so you may need to bring in some other people that have those skills. Um, if you don't already have them on the team or there's a lot of different routes you can go, maybe you're going to license this to a company that does already have those skills and processes in place. I mean, there's a lot of ways to still – potentially make money but if you're going to try and build that company culture and all the things around the real sweat and labor that it takes to build that business um, these things that Amos is saying I mean it's spot on this is the only way to have a business and to scale it is you have to you have to go through these processes um, and you, you need revenue and how to get revenue it's going to fail of some type so whether it's people on the phone whether it's automated whether it's inbound marketing I don't care where you put it in the macro side of things are spot on and I love your book and I wish we had more time to speak on it but that being said Amos if somebody is listening to this show right now and they want to number one um, learn more about Techstars Austin or also pick up your book um, what, what are the best ways for them to do that uh, thanks for asking that so sell more faster is available anywhere where books are sold uh, so you can get it on Amazon Barnes and Nobles uh, Barnes and Nobles uh, if you buy it on Amazon and you love it please leave me a positive review um, and then in terms of learning more about Techstars, you can go to techstars.com slash Austin. Fantastic. Hey, Amos, really appreciate you coming on the show. And uh, thank you for creating that book. You're going to help a lot of entrepreneurs, business owners, a lot of people in the startup space. And I would say even if you have a mature business, um, get, get this book. Uh, this will take you back to some of the fundamentals, and maybe you'll pick up some things from this that will that'll help you in your path, and you can kind of go back and reverse engineer some things that are missing. So uh, thanks again, Amos, for coming on the show. And to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Without you, there's no show, so keep listening. Subscribe. Um, if you're watching this on the YouTube channel, uh, don't forget, leave us some comments in the comment section. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Love to hear your take on what it takes to scale a business and to uh, build, build a sales force. Um, so leave us some comments there. Love to engage with you there. I'm not claiming I have all the answers. We're going to make Amos do the work on that one. Don't worry. Leave some comments. We'll, we'll put him on the hook for that one. <laughs> and Amos, thanks awesome. again for coming on the show. Thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate it.